As is our custom, the class of 1934 distinguished professor gives the December master's and PhD commencement address. The 2015 recipient is Dr. George Nemhauser, an institute professor and Russell, Russell Chandler III chair in industrial and systems engineering. Dr. Nemhauser is considered one of the world's top optimization researchers. He's won every major award in the field of op optimization, including the, the field's first ever Kachian Prize for Lifetime Achievement in 2010. Dr. Nemhauser came to Georgia Tech in 1985. He was the first sitting Georgia Tech professor to be elected to the National Academy of Engineering. And his work has dramatically impacted the theory and application of optimization. He has more than 200 publications and more than 25,000 citations. One of his books has been the premier textbook on integer and combinatorial optimization for 25 years. And he's delivered plenary or keynote addresses in 15 countries on five continents. Please join me in welcoming Professor George Nimhaus. Thank you, President Peterson, for inviting me to give this commencement address. It is a great honor to have this opportunity to speak to our advanced degree graduates, their families and friends. Congratulations to all of you graduating today. Receiving a master's or PhD degree means that you've been a college student for at least five years. And for some of you, it's almost double that, counting your undergraduate years. That's a long haul, and I'm sure you're eager to move on. Being a professor, I'm accustomed to giving 50-minute lectures. As of today, you're done with all of that, so I'll try to make this one a little shorter. I believe my job today is to give you advice on your career and life goals. Later, I'll share with you some of my thoughts about success. But I'd like to start by encouraging you to listen and think carefully over all advice you're given to make sure that it really works for you. Here are a couple examples from my life and career. I received a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering, but I didn't feel enthusiastic about getting a real job, so I enrolled in a PhD program in chemical engineering at Northwestern. My favorite and best subject had always been math, and for an elective in my first semester of graduate study, I signed up for a new course called Operations Research in the Department of Industrial Engineering. An emerging field at the time, operations research is a discipline that deals with the application of advanced analytical methods to help make better decisions. Academically, it is at the intersection of mathematics, industrial engineering, and computer science. It focuses on building models and algorithms for solving practical problems in business, industry, government, and society. I love this course and the professor who taught it. For the first time, I was really excited and inspired by something academic. I came home for Christmas vacation and told my parents that I was switching from chemical engineering to a new program called Operations Research. They, very caring working class people, were appalled. How would you find a job, they asked me. What if this is a passing fad based upon this new technology of computers that might not even work? I returned to school and switched majors, but didn't tell my parents for quite a while. Despite their well-intended advice to the contrary, this was one of the three best decisions I have made in my life. Three months later, I would meet my future wife, Ellen. After another three months, we were married at ages of 22 and 20, respectively. 56 years later, and still in love with Ellen, I can say that this was the best decision I've ever made in my life. Despite various pieces of frank evidence saying that we were too young, didn't know each other long enough, etc. I have one more example, and this one involves Georgia Tech. I've taught my whole professional life, first at Johns Hopkins in the 60s, and then at Cornell for 15 years, before coming to Tech in 85. Tech was a very different place 30 years ago. It has always had an excellent reputation for undergraduate education, and of course still does. 
But under the leadership of President Joe Pettit, tech was just beginning to emerge as an institute that focused on basic research and graduate education. Mike Thomas, one of my very first PhD students at Hopkins, was chair of the School of Industrial and Systems Engineering and would later serve as provost. During Tech's first capital campaign, Mike persuaded Russ Chandler to endow a chair in ISYE and offered me the position. I saw it as a great opportunity. The chair would provide me with resources to build a new research program, and I would play a key role in filling many open faculty positions. My Cornell colleagues were shocked that I would consider leaving a great Ivy League bastion of learning, especially to come to the backward, sleepy South, where the only things that could possibly be better were football and weather. When I announced that I was coming to Tech, despite all their well-meaning advice to the contrary, they thought I'd lost my mind. But this was another of the best decisions that I've made in my career. So what's to be learned from my stories? I do believe there is guaranteed good advice of a general nature, but it's up to the individual to figure out how to apply it in specific situations. Changing my studies and career to operations research exemplifies several elements that I think are most important for great success. One, find your passion. You've got to love what you're doing. But passion needs to be reinforced by results. So number two, do good. Do something that makes the world a better place to live in. I love doing research because I believe the results improve our quality of life. But I love being a professor even more because of the students, especially you graduate students, with whom I've worked one-on-one -on, -one on research projects and dissertations. It gives me the greatest pleasure when one of my students becomes a faculty member at one of our peer institutions. Number three, gut feeling. Sometimes instinct beats logic or analytics when arriving at the best thing to do. Although my profession is all about analytic decision making, I believe that some of the most important decisions you make come from the gut, like when I chose operations research as a major. Number four, work hard and have fun. Having fun motivates hard work. Success rarely happens without hard work. Being willing to make the maximum possible effort usually comes about not because you are the most disciplined person, but because you're having fun. Sometimes passion and a desire to do good and hard work are not enough to achieve your goal. This leads me to advice given by Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She said, number five, fight for the things you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. Soon after I came to Tech, President Pettit passed away. In 1987, he was succeeded by Pat Cresign, who had been the provost at Carnegie Mellon. President Cresign's vision was to create a technological university for the 21st century. In 1988, he proposed a controversial restructuring of the university that involved the creation of three new colleges, one of which would be the College of Computing, the first such college in the country. The reorganization was initially opposed by many of the faculty, and in particular by leaders of the faculty senate. They thought maintaining the status quo was preferred to the risk of the unknown. But I was very much in favor of the change, since it was a perfect fit with my aspirations in coming to Tech. I was delighted when Pat asked me to chair the committee for the establishment of the College of Computing. Justice Ginsburg's advice was exactly what I used to finalize a recommendation, and in the end, the whole faculty voted to approve the reorganization. I believe the reorganization helped transform Tech from a specialized institution to a top national university. At the time, the College of Engineering's national graduate ranking was 14. Now it is sixth nationally and second among public universities. The computer science graduate program is in the top 10, 
and, and many other engineering programs are in the top 10 as well, in fact, 11 of them. There is no doubt that a graduate degree from tech provides great opportunity for the future. And you are now walking into the future. Fill it with what you love to do. Work hard. Create a better world for everyone. Follow your gut feelings and talk in a way that people will believe you. But most of all, have fun. I am confident that all of you graduates will make the world a better place. As Nick Selby in his 2013 convocation speech so aptly put it, you can do that. Go Jackets.